Kishore Kumar Tripathi, Member Secretary, Oro Bharati, Sri Aurobindo Society Puducherry. He will be addressing us on the medieval Vaishnava saints, Alvars, and the philosophy of Vaishnava Vedanta, culture, mysticism, tradition, and continuity, directly in line with the topic of this conference. Thank you. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Gananantva Ganapati Gum Hava Mahe Kavim Kavim Namapa Shabastamam Jaisth Raja Brahmanam Brahmanaspata Anaha Srinan Nodibheshi Dashadhanam Om Midam Namaharshi Bhyapur Vajay Bhyapur Vibhya Pathikdrubhya Namaha Salutations at the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. The Sastra says, Tad Vishnu ho paramam padam shada pashyanti suraya. Even if forget about the human beings, the gods also always aspire for the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. My topic is medieval Vaishnav saints, the Alvars, and the philosophy of Vaishnav Vedanta, culture, mysticism, tradition, and continuity. It's a long paper actually, it will take half an hour. I will not go into tips. I just want to start my presentation with a simple query. That is, all our activities are proclaimed or confined by our thoughts, which is the functioning of the mind. But the Brahman is beyond than all these. So how to experience the consciousness in its purity form without the mind? The another question is, our mind is also limited with sthana, kala and patra, space, time and causation. Brahman is also beyond than this. So how to know the true essence of the Brahman? I think it is the main essence of all the sastras. Like Adi Guru Shankaracharya says, Slokar dhena prabhakshami, yaduktam grantha koti vi, brahma shatyam jagan mithya, jiva brahma eva na aparaha. He said that only within the half of the slokas I will define what the quotes of the scriptures, Grantha Kotivi, Brahma Shatyam, the ultimate reality is the Brahman, Jagat, Jagat is the Mithya, and Jiva Brahmaeva. There is no difference between the Jivan and the Brahman. So, if we'll go to the this Vaishnava tradition, is one of the most, you can say, the intangible cultural heritage. Before joining with Sri the Society, I was part of the Ministry of Culture for 12 years. And especially we worked on many of the projects. And, and our main approach was how to connect this culture with all its aspects. Like we talk about the literature, what's about the culture, what's about the heritage, what's about the architecture, what's about the living traditions. It is involved in that. So if you refer to this Vaishnavism, one of the most intangible, uh, intangible <laughs> cultural heritage, when we talk about the intangible, especially the medieval Vaishnav saints will find that uh, it was flourished through the Acharyas, the saints and the Acharyas. There are twelve alvars and the Acharya, that's Natha Muni, he compiled all his, all the creations of these twelve alvars, the four thousand Naladiya Divya Prabandham. It refers the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Please allow me to say the Sankirtan tradition of Manipur. It was included the UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage. If you refer to the teachings of the Alvars, we find some of the significant points. The first is the traditional, contemporary, and the living practices. You can say that Vaishnavism is a core principle of principles of Indian spirituality. When we say that a Hindu spirituality or Indian spirituality, there is no such spirituality like Indian spirituality, American spirituality, Nepali spirituality. As long as we have the spirit, we are spiritual, what we feel. Because the Sastra says that is beyond than the mind to think about. Because all our activities are proclaimed by the thoughts, but functioning of the mind. The second is the inclusive. You see how this Vaishnav tradition, this Alvars, through their teachings, they have created an inclusive uh, structure to imbibe many of the traditional, many of the sects, many of the forms, many of the traditions. Like you take the example of Periyar Alvar. He has written, my Tamil is not so good, so I have just tried, I am trying to learn Tamil since two years. Palandu, Palandu, Palayan Tandu, Palakodi Nurairam, 
मलांड तिण तोली मणि बणो ऊन सेवंडी तिरक का पप्पू तिरक कप्पू लेट अस फ्रेज द लॉर्ड एंड से पुलांड टू पुलांड कॉन्क्योर हिज एनिमीज विथ हिज स्ट्रांग आर्म्स वी फ्रेज हिम फॉर एवर फॉर एवर एंड फॉर एवर एंड फॉर मेनी क्रोड्स ऑफ इयर्स प्रोटेक्ट अस एज वी आर बिनेथ योर डिवाइन फिट as all of you know that maharshi arvindo 158th birth anniversary was completed recently the government of india celebrated two subsequent years it was started in 2021 and 15th august it was completed maharshi i would like to quote maharshi arvindo's one of the quotations which is written in vaishnavism is the same trio the bhagavata the bhakta and the bhagavan the bhagavata which is the law of the vaishnava dispensation of adoration and love the bhakta representing the fellowship of those in whom that law is manifest bhagavan the divine lover and the beloved in whose being and nature the divine law of love is founded and fulfills itself the avatar represents this third element the divine personality nature and being who is the soul of the dharma and the sangha informs them with himself keep them living and draws men towards the felicity and liberation i am on court sri arvind marshi arvindo has also told a lot of things about the alvar traditions especially before the independence with the help of mahakavi subramanya bharati the famous tamil poet and patriot he translated he has translated he tried to translate the tamil texts he translated the tirukural the first and second chapter half of the second chapter and uh, he has written about the andal about the nam alvars so the alvars has a different kinds of philosophical systems especially the lord many beautiful stories if you refer to the beautiful stories you find how beautiful they have de- defined the spirituality especially in the light of lord vishnu's incarnations and how it is part of the community life and conditions so the alvars holds a significant role in the history of vaishnavism the celebrated vaishnav saints of south india especially through their naladiya divya prabandham the 4000 shlokas especially composed by the 12 alvars uh, my main focus was uh, just to give a glimpses of the teachings what the alvar tradition has given when we talk about such kind of issues especially conferences like this and like uh, institutions like institution of science and spirituality jnu and central sanskrit universities and there i request that uh, we should also focus especially if you refer to the alvar tradition the temple cultures like you take many of the sadagamas the temple tradition how it has influenced and you take up the festive celebration many of the unique celebrations related to the 12 alvar traditions are also there so there is a rich tradition apart from the literary the archaeological evidences the temple cultures the institutions the folk cultures and more evolving the uh, community culture in more community involvement with these traditions needs to be studied and in my tradition in my paper also i have given a long list of the temples and the festivals which is being celebrated through these alvar traditions and uh, if you refer if you can go through the full paper for my whatever i have said i just want to uh, present conclude with my presentation that this albert tradition is one of the intangible traditions which has living traditional and which is living contemporary and uh, traditional perspectives it is an inclusive uh, spiritual tradition and it has a contemporary relevance also so integral like interdisciplinary and the transdisciplinary research can find it's a unique way to explore its hidden realities and with a, the, these few words my prayer to lord vishnu to give us the sacred spirituality and the sacred spirit to learn the divine with these few words hari krishna hari krishna